Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 1st, 2020, or Marchtober, as I like to call it, because it kind of feels like March never really ended. In this episode, I just bought some new servers for my home lab. I bought some super micro servers that I really like, and I thought I would walk you through the process of how I set one up. And when I say set up, I mean actually installing the physical components inside the server, because I bought an empty husk of a server and some components and installed it myself. And I, I filmed a little video about that. So this is gonna be a little different than the normal daily check-in because I actually pre-filmed the process of setting it up because I knew it was gonna take a little bit longer and then did a voiceover. So I'm just gonna insert that in. Before we get to that, I wanna check in with you. How you doing? What's going on? It's Thursday. Thursday's a good day for me. I enjoy this sort of change from doing all edge stuff to kind of walking through my home lab stuff. So in this, you know, uh, video, I'm going to be walking through setting up that portion of the server. And maybe next week we can get into the switch configuration that I'm doing and how I'm going to install ESXi on this server. So maybe that'd be a good topic for next week. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I hope things are going okay for you. And without further ado, let's jump over to the video. All right, let's get started with setting up this Supermicro SYS E200AD. So that's it. If we look at the top and slide over, you've got your standard power button, reset button, and LEDs. On the bottom, very important, is the BMC password for the out-of-band management port. It's got four NIC ports for communication and then another port, which is for that out-of-band communication. The four NIC ports, two are one gig and two are 10 gig. This is the power supply for this guy. And once I open it up, you'll see why it needs an external power supply. I've got a crucial one terabyte SSD, an EVO plus 500 gig NVMe drive and two 32 gig dim sticks. So I'm going to be putting 64 gig of memory in this server, 500 gig of NVMe storage and one terabyte of SSD storage. That's a decent amount of storage to cram in this little box. And we'll see just how little it is once I remove the two screws that are holding on the cover. All right, so those two screws are off. You have to slide the panel back and open it up. And there's another protection plate that is sitting there. And it's also used to hold the SSD, which we'll see in a little bit how that works. So there's two screws to unscrew there, and then you have to slide the plate down a little bit and it pops off. It's just that simple. Now, once I get the plate off, you'll see just how packed this little unit is. There's not a lot of room. Yes, so that is where the SSD will go in a little bit. Now there's four DIMM slots in here and each one can hold a 32 gig DIMM. So you could potentially have 128 gig of RAM in here. I'm only putting in two sticks and each one's 32 gigs. So that gives me 64 gig of RAM, which is more than enough for most of the lab situations that I'm going to be encountering. It's important to note that you need to use the two blue slots first and then the two black slots if you're going to be putting in only two DIMMs. The labeling's on the right, but it's a little confusing. The only thing you need to remember is use the blue ones first. Now I'm gonna install that NVMe drive. There's a single screw in the bottom left corner that you have to remove, and the slot for the NVM drive, NVMe drive is in the bottom middle. There you go, see I am sliding in the NVMe drive now. That's it, that's installed. I just have to put that retention screw back in there so it doesn't sit popped up. The next thing that I'm going to do after installing the NVMe drive is to install the SSD drive. And like I said, that attaches to that protective plate that's on the left. Now, in order to attach it, we need to hook up the SATA cable and we need to hook up the power cable. The orange port is where the SATA cable goes and then the power port is wedged up against the battery and the fans. So not a lot of room there. The unit does ship with that cable that includes both connections. So that part is nice. Now flipping over this protective plate, that is where the hard drive is gonna go and you wanna have the connections going to the back. We're gonna have to snake the cable around. If you position the hard drive with the connections to the front of the server, there's actually not enough room for that cable to plug in and route the cabling. It bumps into the fans. There's really no way around it. So I've attached the hard drive using four screws and now I am securing the cable adapter to the back of it. And I'm going to first connect the power cable to the power supply. 
Now, two things to note about the power connection. One, there's no clip on it, so you're not going to feel that satisfying snap when it goes in. You just have to make sure it's pushed down all the way. It also might bump against the battery, the CMOS battery that's in there. You want to make sure that you're pushing the cable around so it's not bumping that battery. Now I'm going to attach the SATA cable, and that's going into the orange port. There are five blue ports. What are those for? Well, that would be for additional connections, which there's no room in this form factor for that, but this board could go into a different form factor that actually has room for additional connections. All right, so you gotta really pack the cables in there. It takes a little bit of work and then get that plate slide, slid back in. Once you do that, you put the two retaining screws back in to hold that plate in place. At this point, all the hardware that I wanted to put into the server is now in place. I've got 64 gig of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and a 500 gig NVMe drive. This is going to be an ESXi host, or at least in its first incarnation. The SSD drive and the flash drive, the NVMe drive are going to be part of my vSAN setup. Now I'm going to put the covering back on. And the next step after this is I actually have a mini rack in my house and I wanted to have this as a rack mounted unit. So I actually bought the rack mount kit. And what's in that kit? Well, we've got two wings here that go on either side of the server because the server itself is not wide enough for a 19 inch rack. And then it also comes with a tray for the power supply that goes right against the server. And that way you keep the power supply close and it's not just dangling in the middle of your server rack because that's not a great look. All right, so as you saw inside, there's no room for that power supply. So it really had to go outside of the server. There are three screw holes that that wing is going to attach to and you want to use all of the holes except for the raised one on the wing. That raised one is actually gonna be for that power supply tray, which we'll see in a couple minutes. So get those three screws attached. It should be pretty obvious where they go. It's all gonna line up once you put the wing on there. And the wing can go on either side. They're not, there's not like a left and a right side to it. So that's kind of nice. Uh, dealt with some older server rails that really did have a right and the left, and you only realize it once you've attached one of them, and that's fun. All right, now I'm gonna put on the power supply tray. There's kind of a little clip on there that goes over the wing and it needs that raised screw uh, hole to screw in the attachment for that. So that should all line up and then it will also line up with two scroll screw holes that are on the back of the server for the other side of the tray. So I'll go ahead and screw that in and then I'm also gonna screw in the other two screws on the back. You'll notice that the power supply tray has a little clip that's raised, we're gonna slot the power supply in and that little clip is going to push the power supply up against a little wing that's sticking out. There's also this retention clip that's gonna create tension between the power supply and the side of the server. So that slides in and it has two screws to hold it in place. Once we have those two screws in place, I'm gonna lay the server down and go ahead and slide in that power supply and we can see how the clip on the bottom pushes it up against the little lip that's protruding at the bottom of the screen. That's the other wing for the server. So when you have both wings, it extends out to the full length of the rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this power supply in and then slide it forward and it will go under that little lip and the clip on the bottom is gonna be pushing up. That should hold it in place pretty well. You don't need to add any Velcro or add any zip ties for that. Now I'm going to connect the power cable to the, to the port on the back and that does screw on. Make sure that screw is done tightly. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna do is take the cable, fold it up real nice and zip tie it to the tray so I don't have anything dangling or hanging. That's pretty much it for this setup. Like I said, what I'm gonna do is take this server and I'm going to install ESXi on it and I'm gonna use it as part of a vSAN cluster. So I actually ended up buying four of these. Three of them are gonna be part of that cluster and the fourth one is gonna be like an external management ESXi server. It was a little pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but I'll include links for all of these products in the description. I'm not, these aren't referral links or anything. And I'll also include a code to get 2% off from where I bought the server, which is not nothing. All right, I hope you enjoyed that setup. I am going to include 
in the description, links to buy all this stuff. They're not referral links, just, you know, if you're interested in getting the same gear that I have, go ahead and hit up those links and you can buy the server and the components yourself and assemble it. And le hey, let me know if you do. I'm, I'm curious to know your thoughts on this solution. But that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share. And until tomorrow, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Thanks.